All right, so Matt, when we're talking about a PTZ camera, it uh, you know one of the amazing things about this little device is that it does have motors and mechanics that allows you to move the camera without physically standing behind it like a traditional tripod or handheld camera does. But with that uh, come some extra pieces of gear that you might need, right? So if I have a traditional studio camera or broadcast camera, I just plug some fiber in the back of it. It sends all my data and power, everything that I need back to video world or, or maybe it's just an SDI cable. But this is a little different. So let's help us understand like what are the what's the least amount of components you need to operate a PTZ and then you know what is the range of how much all the extra pieces you can actually get to make that experience better. Right, absolutely. That's a great point, Rusty. And we have kind of all the bells bells and whistles right. here. So you can kind of make it as complicated as you want or as simple as you want, uh, depending on what your setup is. Uh, the very basic is that you can control it from your laptop, whether it's okay. a PC or a Mac. You can actually get onto your laptop and uh, download the Canon camera search tool. The most basic is you can find the PTZ through the camera search tool, and then that opens up a URL where you can pan, tilt, zoom, control the cameras, gammas, Got control it. exposure. And I'll get a preview of that it. image and everything. Exactly right. Okay, You'll cool. have a preview image of that right on your, uh, your web browser. Uh, so that's the most simple. Uh, if you want to start then combining cameras into a multi-view situation, mm -hmm. you can also download the uh, Canon free RCCA, which is the remote camera control application. And the RCCA then, once you have those web browsers open and those uh, IP addresses assigned, you can bring those cameras into the, the web browser. You can control up to nine cameras. Okay at any one time uh, on the RCCA, or, and you can uh, sort of register 20 uh, that you can then reassign into, okay. into and your control window. control all from my web browser. Exactly right. Okay, and uh, what, what are the components I would need to accomplish that? You just need your, your multiple PTZs, however many you have, um, and then you would have your Ethernet cables running to a PoE plus switch. Got it. Uh, and that would run into the back of the switch here. And this actually powers the cameras through uh, power over uh, Ethernet. Cool. And then this would need to be plugged in. You would also need to have an Ethernet line, hard line into your laptop. So and then, so whatever adapters you might need if you have a Mac sure. or something to get that into your laptop. So once you have the switch and your laptop and you have your PTZs, you're pretty much good to go. That's the basic level uh, at which you can start to control these cameras okay. and see what you're controlling. So is it just a question there? Is it is it better to have a closed network, like a, a self-contained yes, network? Yes, exactly okay. right. So it's your own self-contained network. You kind of create the IP addresses for the cameras. Uh, you assign those, and uh, you you know you have every anywhere from zero to a hundred that you could assign uh, on those. IP and these addresses. aren't that expensive. This is basically just a dumb network power it, switch. Right? Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So and then you can have these that have as many inputs as as you want. You know, you could have a whole rack full of these uh, if you have. If you're going nuts and have 50 PTZs uh, hooked up to these things, uh, you can get these as big as you need. Cool. All right, so that's the base minimum. Um, yes. Which gives you full full uh, control and full you know usability. Right. But there's also other options that kind of make things easier on you, I would say. Absolutely, yes. So camera by camera, you can control uh, on the web browsers. Multiple cameras you can control on your laptop on the RCCA, but if you want to get a little more fancy with kind of the joystick controls and this sort of thing, then you can move up to the Canon uh, RCIP100, which is this model here, and this can control uh, 10 different cameras in 10 different groups, so you can actually have 100 different cameras that are controllable with this device here. And then this you bring in those same IP addresses that you've already assigned and that you've used in your RCCA um, laptop application, and you just assign those into here, and then you can uh, go ahead and you control the cameras here with the joystick control. You can zoom, you can paint, uh, you can kind of change yeah. the look of, of the image. You can also do some of the extra bells and whistles that we'll talk about a little later in terms of the uh, other uh, sure. abilities of the PTZ. And I can see, like, just as a... I mean, basically anybody would, I think, understand this. But if you're doing this kind of movement on a mouse or th on a laptop, it's it's kind of rudimentary. It's really tough to be smooth with that kind of movement, right? It's so so true. this allows you to gives you the tactile response to be able to do follows in a much better way than you would be able to in a GUI. Very much so, yeah. And if you're a gamer, you can actually 
hook up your own gaming joysticks okay. uh, and use it that way as well. So you don't have to be limited to this joystick. You can use whatever joystick you're uh, you're comfortable with. But but yes, it's much less clunky than having to use a slider yeah. on the uh, laptop interface for sure. Okay. And then one step up from this is our newer uh, RC IP1000. And this one, uh, if the IP100 could do 100 cameras, this one could, well, not do a thousand, but it can do 200 cameras. That's a marketing uh, miss. Perhaps. I know, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and this one too, it's joystick controlled. Uh, this one actually has a multi-view screen, so you can monitor uh, different, uh, up to nine different cameras on this one. Uh, you see we can uh, subdivide it into nine cameras. Uh, we only have two hooked up right now. Sure. And um, so again, it, it's it's joystick control. You have uh, more buttons as opposed to having to go into the uh, deeper into the menu system. So it's a little more uh, at your fingertips, as they right. say. Yeah. So I could see some benefits in this. Just like you said, having dedicated buttons allows you to move things around faster, get the different cameras easier. And then the, you know, if I'm thinking about a church control room, you can't always you know have you know the best view to a monitor wall or or get a multi view in front of you so having that built in is is really great for your operator your volunteer to be able to see what they're operating quickly um, and make sure that you know you can see nine cameras at once make sure you've got proper framing on all of those absolutely absolutely it comes in handy um and it happens to be touchscreen as well so if you have an autofocus enabled which we can get into a little deeper later but you can actually touch screen focus uh, cool. once you're, uh, have each camera enabled individually. Give me like, uh, like price range differences. Like what, what is, the, what are some of the differences in this? So okay, it's web so, GUI free. So yeah. So the GUI, you're just paying for the price of the camera at that mm -hmm. point and whatever, uh, switch you're going to, uh, to, to purchase. If you move up to this, you're in the range of about $2,000. Uh, and if you, uh, move up to our new IP 1000, that's in the $5,000 range. Got it. And I think it's, before someone just looks at the price of something, you have to consider what other components would you need, right? Like Absolutely. if you're operating this, I can't see what the camera's looking at. Right. So I got to think about what is the cost to get the signal so I can watch the image of the camera. This build, builds it in. And so you may not need some of those extra pieces. So that's some of the homework you have to do. Absolutely. What the best solution and see is. what fits with your workflow better. And it should be noted that all of these controllers can also paint and view uh, some of our um, studio cameras. So if you had one of our C500 Mark IIs or a C300 Mark III or a C70 yeah. hooked up with an operator, you can see what that operator is doing. You can change the white balance. You can make that look conform to the PTZs through these controllers. Um, these really are made to help you make the cameras yeah. match and help all of the cameras play well together. So it's not just the PTZs that these controllers can uh, can help control. Awesome. Now that painting thing is really could be really helpful, right? Because one of the things I see a lot with people have mixed formats of cameras in their camera chain. You may have a cinema camera and then you may have a PTZ, you may have a broadcast camera and it's, um, you know, unless it's the same sensor from the same, you know, group of manufactured sensors, it's hard to make those all look the same. And so be able to paint or shade multiple cameras so that they all uh, have a cohesive look across your multi-view uh, is really, really important. So that's cool. Absolutely. And what's great about this is the whole Canon line are made to play well together and intercut well together. So you have literally the same color science from our PTZs to our professional cinema cameras to our camcorders. It's all the same color science. It's the same sensors between our camcorders and our PTZs. Literally, the smaller PTZs have our half-inch sensors from the okay. XA65 camcorders. Uh, the one-inch sensor in the larger PTZs is the same sensor from our XA75 camcorders. So you have all of the same technology playing all together. And so when you do paint them to match, it's a very easy just kind of nudging uh, uh, different color aspects together to make it cut, cut well. Great. 